Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about Visual Chat GPT, which is a system for talking, drawing, and editing using Visual Foundation models. So let's get started. What is Visual Chat GPT? Well, as all of us understand, ChatGPT cannot process or generate images from the visual world. It can only process text. And therefore, we need what is called as Visual ChatGPT. It is a system which incorporates different visual foundation models. What are visual foundation models? Where models of this kind which can actually take images and then can do some processing on top of them. For example, remove objects from images, replace objects, uh, take images and convert them to text or, uh, you know, take images and do question answering on top of those images to depth to image estimation uh, uh, or image to depth, uh, you know, finding depth of every pixel and so on, right? Manipulations with images in short. So Visual Chat GPT enables the user to perform uh, various actions on images while interacting with Chat GPT by sending and receiving not just language, text, but also images. It provides complex visual, it allows users to provide uh, complex visual questions or visual editing uh, commands that require collaboration of multiple such AI based visual models. It also helps users to provide feedback and ask for corrected results, right? For example, here is a use case where a user basically says, here is a flower and please generate a flower conditioned on this. It should be a cartoon image and uh, you know it should be, uh, uh, you know, uh, use predicted, uh, generate a red flower, right? And use predicted depth uh, from this image. Now, the user is expecting this kind of an output. So, however, on the, um, you know, what, what this Visual Chat GPT system does is to take the user query, generate an appropriate prompt, uh, uh, and pass it on to Chat GPT such that Chat GPT selects the right Visual Foundation models to use and do iterative reasoning. So, in the first part, first version, first iteration, Chat GPT says use depth estimation model, then it says use depth to image model, and finally do style transverses to create a cartoonish kind of an image which is red in color and follows the depth uh, as estimated from the original image. The prompt manager is the big deal here, right? And it basically does a few things. It explicitly tells ChatGPT the capability of each of those visual foundation models and specifies the input output format. It also explicitly um, you know, converts different visual information, for example, from the input query or from processed processed images, input input image as well as processed images, intermediate processed images. Uh, you know, uh, it, it converts it to language format and tells ChatGPT Chat what is going on. Right. It handles the histories, so history of uh, uh, various iterative reasoning steps that have to be done or history of a conversation with the user, priorities of various visual foundation models to be applied and so on. Um, and it also tells all of that to chat GPT via prompts. So this is how the system works. Uh, you know, here is a user query coming in. Uh, when as soon as the user uh, system gets the query, it basically says received. Then it basically uh, the user may say replace the sofa in this image with a desk, and then make it like a water painting. Now, you know, uh, the mod uh, the system takes the image, saves it with a unique name. But then when it has to do whatever it has to do, you know, this query has to basically go to ChatGPT, where ChatGPT has to decide what is the visual model to be used so as to perform the the command that the user has provided. Okay. So therefore, the prompt manager takes us input the user query which has just come in. It also takes us input information about all the visual foundation models. There might be, you know, these guys use 22 different visual foundation models. It takes information about them. It also takes some system principles as input, which I will soon talk about. And then it takes about takes the history of the dialogue which has happened so far. And then it basically decides whether it must use a visual foundation model. If so, which one, right? If not, then it has generated the output image. It just basically passes on the output image. But before that, of course, use the visual foundation model. It also, you know, uh, uh, takes in as input, uh, uh, you know, the output that comes from this visual foundation model, and then decides which is the next visual foundation model to call if it has to do iterative reasoning, right? So every time it does uh, some reasoning, it basically generates an intermediate image, which is also saved in the images folder and given as input, you know, some, some output, some small version of it is also provided as input for the next call of chat GPT. Okay. So now the prompt manager has to manage several kinds of prompts before giving it as input to chat GPT. For example, it must uh, uh, manage basic system principles. It must motivate the chat GPT model to not use its autoregressive thinking, but actually invoke different uh, visual foundation models. It must also tell chat GPT to be very sensitive to the file names. It must use the original file name or use an intermediate file name generated by, uh, by a previous visual model in the pipeline. 
it must still tell chat, chat gpt to follow appropriate reasoning format so that chat gpt comes up with uh, uh, the appropriate uh, um, you know action to be taken and the right inputs to be provided to the next action or the next visual foundation model the prompt manager also must give the right commands to the visual chat to the chat gpt model about uh, the capabilities of the 22 visual models that it has what are the names of those models how do you use them what are the input output formats of those models right um, uh, of course, the prompt manager must provide the history of dialogue so far or history of reasoning so far that has been done using previous visual models that have run as part of this pipeline. Uh, it must also tell uh, information to ChatGPT about the user query. If it was a unique, if it was a file that uh, image file that the user uploaded, then it must tell, uh, hey, this is the name of the file. Of course, ChatGPT can't take uh, the visual input, but it must at least tell the name of the file to ChatGPT uh, so that ChatGPT can decide how to process it further. Uh, it must also prompt ChatGPT by saying, do I need to use a tool so that ChatGPT doesn't get to its autoregressive thinking and actually makes use of some visual foundation model. Um, lastly, when some visual foundation model has executed, it must take the output and tell ChatGPT that this is the output which is generated by the model. Now, of course, ChatGPT can't process images, so therefore you can't pass the intermediate image generated by the visual model to ChatGPT, but there is a nice way using which this prompt manager tells ChatGPT that, hey, this is the processing that has been done. This is the operation that was applied, by the way, on this original image or on this previous image, and this is the next image that has been created. Uh, you know, if required at this stage, it must also tell ChatGPT that, hey, maybe this is also a good time to ask a question, uh, a clarification question to the user if uh, the visual model was not able to generate something that the user expected. Okay. Now, here is an example output from the system, a dialogue conversation between user and this model, visual ChatGPT model. User just says, hello, who are, uh, you know, who are you? You know, and uh, there's a text command. The visual chat GPT model just says, well, I'm huge visual chat GPT. You can actually use me for doing various kinds of text and visual tasks. Um, now, uh, then the model and then the user can say, I like drawing, but I'm not good at it. Can you help me draw an apple? So the model in the visual chat GPT system now at this point should uh, invoke a visual model uh, which can actually take text and create images and therefore generate these images. User can then say, hey, draw an image and then uploads a sketch but then you know uh, the system basically does its inner dialogue and thinking that yes i have received the sketch and then tells the user hey, yeah i've received it but then what do you want me to do with it this is an extra question the clarification question that the user asks here uh, that the system asks here to the user right the user clarifies that here is a sketch and basically i want you to convert it to a good image and the chat gpt official chat gpt system does so now at this point, a user may give more commands like convert it to watercolor painting, and that is what the system does. Uh, user may ask what is the background color, system says blue. User may say, I don't like the apple, remove the apple. Well, the user removes the apple. Uh, the system removes the apple, but then you see that the apple's image the reflection is still there on the table. User may dislike it and say, hey, replace it with a black table. I don't like the reflection. And uh, that is what the visual chat GPT model does as well, okay? So that's a nice multimodal dialogue going on between the system and the user, right? So in short, in this video, I talked about Visual Chat GPT, which as you saw is an open system incorporating different visual models and enabling users to interact with Chat GPT beyond just the language format, right? Uh, the way it works is based on this nice prompt manager, which acts on top of Chat GPT using various visual models as, uh, as, as its toolkit, right? It, uh, it basically does a series of prompts to help inject the visual information into the text-only Chat GPT and thus helps solve complex visual questions step by step iterative reasoning okay so you can actually uh, you know look at the code and prompts and so on right there um, so that's it for this video hope you liked it thank you for watching connect with me on my linkedin or look at my research on the home